So the question is, what are the prospects for a Supreme Court ruling on the military ban? And what is the status for trans service members now? What impact does the military ban issue have on other LGBTQ rights struggles? Um, so, I mean, I can't speak to, um, you know, what the status is for, for trans service members right now. Um, I'm not a scholar in that, or, or you know, uh, but I think that the, uh, a big issue comes up in, oh, a big issue comes up in activist spaces where people are very um, conflicted about the military generally, and I see that, I see that a lot, and that people don't want to engage with this because of uh, feelings about um, the military and the way that that's used. And I, I want to stress with those people often that um, the military is very much chosen as uh, for this topic, has been chosen like, you know, in a room somewhere um, because the idea of service is tied to the idea of citizenship and the idea of citizenship is tied to belonging and who deserves to belong in our society. And so by uh, try trying to erode this I idea of the right to serve and is tied to the right to citizenship and the right to belonging in, uh, in our society. And so it's, it's not just about serving in the military, however we feel about that. It's about existing within our society and being allowed to be uh, active participants in our communities. Um, I definitely agree with the citizenship um, aspect of the military ban being really important because it kind of declares, at least for me, what it says to me is you're not fit to serve the military, even though I consider myself a pretty fit man. I can work out, I can do what I need to do to get around. So it's like, what are you saying that's wrong with me that I am not qualified to serve in the military? It makes it feel like it's not about my ability to serve, it's about somebody classifying my gender and basically saying, I don't think you're the kind of man I would like on the front lines defending the country. And it's my country too. I was born here even if I wasn't. I've been here 28 years and to me that's a huge slap in the face. I pay taxes, you know, I vote. So do a large number of our trans people here and it just tells us that we're not suited for the military. And many of us are. Like there are quite a few trans women and men that I follow on Instagram that are out there serving the country in the field, you know, every day. And they don't, they don't deserve this. I feel like it's a huge slap in the face to them, especially when they're over there right now. And um, I would just implore the government to do better because they definitely deserve better and they've, you know, given their lives essentially. And you're saying that even though you've done this, you know, just basically like, meh, you know, it was great that you did all that service, but we're going to go ahead and say you don't exist anymore. And that erasure to me is something that keeps me up at night. And it's something that I really hope we are able to uh, push back in the future. Sure. I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist, but I'll, I'll say it anyway. And I've had these discussions with a lot of my friends um, about the whole Trump administration. But I do, God, I feel so weird even saying it out loud now. I do feel the, I do feel the Trump administration has devised this strategy of divide and conquer within within our within the different communities. Um, they, I feel like they they they've sat down and strategized how to divide us, women, trans people, immigrants. You know, and keep everyone fighting their own fights. You know, give them marches and everything that we don't get together and 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 become a united front because everyone's busy doing their own separate marches. Um, this to, to, to me, this this when this when I heard about this, you know, my first thought was, <laughs> this is ridiculous. But I thought, oh. This is another divide and conquer tactic. There's another thing to get the LGBT community, specifically the trans people, up in arms while he goes and does whatever else that he's doing and whatever. And it's never just Trump. Everyone goes, it's Trump, it's Trump. There is a group of people behind him. There's a group of people making all this work. He is just on the forefront. And I keep telling people that that is not just one orange-haired man making all these decisions. There is a group 
that is doing this, and, is a, and to me, it's a divide and conquer tactic. My, my brother-in-law is a drill sergeant in the Marines. They live down in Carlsbad. And I asked them about this, and I said, well, what do your people think about this? And they're like, we go over there to fight for the United States of America. Black, white, brown, trans, man, woman, whatever it is, we're here to fight the good fight, and we're here to stand up for justice. It doesn't matter what you, what, how, how, you, how you identify. And this is a hardcore drill sergeant, right? He's hardcore about his stuff. And, 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 I'm, like, and I'm like, what, what about the other ones? Navy, Army, Marines? He goes, isn't it interesting how it's just, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just in the military that he's going with this. He didn't say federal employees, he doesn't say Pentagon, he doesn't say anybody else, but just the military. Because like, like and I agree with like what you said, it is, it is more than just what, it's what the military represents. It represents America. It represents citizenship. It represents strength. It represents all these things that we hold, that we, we claim to hold dear as, a, as America. So why not go in there and dig in and get us all in a frenzy while they go to something else? And I, and I also um, think that the people that are left out of the discourse when, we're, when we get so focused on just like a, a trans military ban, um, we, and we thinking and thinking about all these things of, about like citizenship or um, you know belonging in a community or things like that um, is that there are so many people who um, are not capable of getting citizenship. There are so many people who do not just live in the U.S. There are so many people who um, are not part of this kind of um, you know almost idealized American you know um, person that uh, kind of get left out in the rebuttal to uh, Trump's, you know, the, this whole uh, military ban, and that those people kind of get left out of the discussion. I think that it's an opportunity to pivot the discussion towards people who are more on the margin, because, I, you know, in, in some respects, I don't care whether I am eligible for the military or not. <laughs> I, I'm not in physical shape anyways. Um, but that... Uh, I want, you know, I, I, I don't want to focus so much on that. I, I understand that it's this, um, that it's this uh, emotional and um, it's this thing that is emotional and that points to all these other aspects of involvement in society. But I also want to make sure that, that, that we're not leaving out the margins because it's kind of like, it's kind of like scooping out the center of a piece of pie, like, you know, and just thinking about that. It's like there's there's so much more to just people trying to enlist in the mil military. Naomi, you want to say something? Yeah. You want to say something? Yeah. Yeah, when, I'm, when I think about the transgender ban in the military that Trump wants to institutionalize, I, I am reminded of a, a favorite quote of mine by Audrey Dorn that, that's, that said, the master's tools will never dismantle the master's house. And so for me, I think what this code is saying is that as trans people, apart from pointing out how discriminatory the military ban is, we also need to be able to interrogate the military industrial complex mm. and how inherently violent it is. Mm. Because it is as macho and heterosexist as the police industrial complex. And these are institutions that we need to question and interrogate. And we also want, and, and sometimes call for their abolition because they perpetuate toxic masculinity and violence in society. Mm -hmm. And to the point regarding the right to serve or that um, being in the military is about citizenship, we can still be citizens without having to serve in the military. We can still express our patriotism and our nationalism without being part of, a, of an inherently violent institution, such as the military or the police. Awesome. Thank you. I think the prospects for from what I remember, and someone correct me if I'm wrong, it went, it was struck down by an appellate court, but then it just came back up to an appellate court. Yeah. 
um, where it was voted in favor, yeah. I think. So one in favor, four against. One in favor, four against. Um, so you know, like it's something that I try and pay close attention to because I am um, just nervous about it going to the Supreme Court, especially with the makeup of the court having changed recently. Mm -hmm. And knowing that if it does go to that, it doesn't really have a good chance. I know that the Supreme Court, I mean, the only thing that we have going for us is that they don't like to overturn precedent. So if there's a precedent on it, like, hopefully they'll err on this side. Um, but I don't know, you know, um, to bring up some of Naomi's points. The thing that always stuck out to me, um, you know, I grew up in uh, a low-income neighborhood. I went into a low-income high school, uh, and the recruiters were always there. They were always there in the schools. And for a lot of us, it was like this, for those who didn't have the grades to go into college, who still wanted a shot at like having, having a nice car or having some sort of saving. Um, and then for those who were maybe questioning their gender, like this was, you know, 20 grand to have a, an elective surgery isn't gonna come by easily. You know, like especially it's not gonna come I used to work at a Popeyes for a minimum wage, so it's not going to come from, you know, like you have to save for a really long time working mm -hmm. at the Popeyes. But if you go and you do a tour, like this all of a sudden gives you access to be able to have this medical care and access to things that you wouldn't otherwise have. Um, you know, I have tons of personal opinions of the military. I personally would never serve, but like I understand that that gave some of the people that I went to school with an opportunity out. And so to take that away from people, it's just, you know, it's an absolute travesty. Um, I, ho I hope it doesn't go to the Supreme Court because my hopes are very low for that. And I went to the same high school as Stephen Miller. Um, that we had no, we've never had recruiters come into our high school. Like it was not, you know, we we were a very affluent community, and so we, you know, we didn't have those same things, you know, coming up. People had so many outs, you know, uh, if they didn't like their situation, they had so many ways to leave. And so it's definitely, uh, it definitely shows a lot of the class um, from people in administration, which is unsurprising.